All right, continuing with chapter seven, complex solutions to quadratic equation. Every quadratic has a solution, real or complex. Remember, complex involves the imaginary numbers. The real solutions for a quadratic equation are the x-intercepts for the graph of the function. The graph of x, f of x equals x squared plus one has no x-intercepts. All right, so this is the graph, y equals x squared plus one. And if we tried to find the zeros, if we set it equal to zero, and solve for x, we could do minus one on both sides. One minus one cancels. Bring down your x squared, and that equals negative one. And of course, taking the square root of both sides, Square root of x squared is x. When you do square root on both sides, you need plus minus. And the square root of negative one is just i. All right, so for this one, we have two complex solutions. And for the complex solutions, they always... are in pairs. Okay, and that's because when you take the um, square root on both sides or use the quadratic formula, it's gonna be plus or minus the square root of a negative. So it's, they're always gonna be in pairs and it's gonna be in the form of a plus bi and a minus bi. All right, even in this case, the A is just zero, and it's just plus or minus I, so the B would just be one. All right, so for the complex solutions, they're always in pairs. All right, please pause and use the quadratic formula given here to solve this equation for X. All right, so this is A, this is B, and this is C. Negative B is going to be negative eight, plus minus radical B squared is gonna be positive eight squared, minus four AC, so that's four times A, which is three, times C, which is positive 14. all over two times A, which is three. All right, so we have the negative eight plus minus, and this is gonna be, let me do this on the calculator, eight squared minus this. All right, and inside the square root, I get negative 104. And that whole thing is divided by two times three, which is six. All right, let's break up uh, 104, write out the factors for it. All right, I'll do it up top here, 104. That's definitely divisible by four. Uh, that would be 26. And then breaking up to 26, you would have 13 and two, and those are both primes. Four is not a prime, but I can do the square root of four pretty easily. All right, let's see. We have negative eight plus minus and square root of negative 104, I'm gonna factor out the square root of negative one and square root of 104 is the equivalent of the square root of four times 13 times two. All right, and that whole thing is still divided by six. All right, now we're in business. We have negative eight plus minus square root of negative one is just I. 
square root of 4 is just 2, so I can bring out the 2, and the 2 is going to be times i. And left underneath, 13 times 2, nothing we can do, so that's radical 26. And again, the whole thing is divided by 6. Last step. 8, 2, 6, they're all evens. Divided by 2, that's negative 4. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so it's 1i or just i. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we are left with negative 4 plus minus i. Radical 26 over 3. All right, the plus minus actually makes it two separate solutions. It's negative 4 plus I radical 26 and negative 4 minus I radical 26, both over 3. All right, so the complex solutions came in conjugate pairs, and this always happens when the solutions are complex numbers. A quadratic expression that has complex zeros is called irreducible because it cannot be factored using real numbers. So just a quick review of the notes when you have the quadratic formula, the part under the square root determines the number and type of solutions. This part is called the discriminant, okay? So when it's positive, you have two real roots and two x-intercepts. When it's zero, you have one real root and one x-intercept. And when it's negative, you have two imaginary roots and no x-intercepts. All right, the fundamental theorem of algebra that states that every polynomial of degree n has exactly n zeros, okay? Some might be counted more than once. So if the highest exponent on the polynomial is, say, um, x to the fourth, that means it has four zeros, okay? Now, like they said, some may be counted more than once, and also the zeros can be real or complex. All right, so to completely factor, we usually need to find its zeros. We will use rational zero theorem, polynomial division, and the quadratic formula. All right, so here they want us to find all zeros real and complex. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. x to the 4th minus 16 equals 0. Now, this is actually in the form of a squared minus b squared. And if you remember from Algebra 2, if you have a squared minus b squared... You can break that up into a minus b and a plus b. All right, so in this case, the a is just x squared. So a squared would be x to the fourth. And the b is just 4. So b squared would be 16. All right, so if we did a minus B, A minus B would be X squared minus 4, and A plus B would be X squared plus 4, and that whole thing still equals 0. Okay, if you want to test this, use FOIL. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth, negative 4X plus negative 4x squared plus 4x squared is 0, and then negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. All right, we set each of these equal to 0. x squared minus 4 is 0, and x squared plus 4 equals 0. All right, if we did plus 4 on both sides, x squared is 4. 
And if we did minus 4 on both sides, x squared is negative 4. Square root on both. And x equals, don't forget the plus minus. Square root of 4 is just 2. Over here, square root on both. Okay, and x is going to equal the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. And, of course, it's plus minus on both. Because when you do square root on both sides, it's plus minus. Okay, radical 4 is just, well, we still have plus minus. Radical 4 is just 2. And radical negative 1 is just i. All right, so this was too real. And this right here is too complex. So two and two, that's four solutions. The uh, exponent was four, x to the fourth. So that's why we wound up with four zeros. Okay, and that is the fundamental theorem of algebra. The highest exponent the highest exponent is how many zeros you're going to have. Can't guarantee that they're going to be real zeros. All right, let's look at this example. We want to find the zeros. We know the coefficient here is just a 1. Okay, so for the possible zeros, we have plus or minus P over Q. And we're using the rational zero theorem. All right, it's always plus minus. And in the numerator, that is the um, factors of 10. We don't worry about the sign. So the factors of 10, we have 1 times 10. We have 2 times 5, and that's pretty much it. And right here is just a 1. All right, so the potential zeros are plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. So now we have to find out which one um, gives us a remainder of 0. Let's plug in 1. Okay, so if we did uh, f of 1, 1 to the 4th is 1, plus 6 times 1 is just 6, plus 9 times 1 is just 9, Minus 6 times 1, minus 10. That gives us 0. All right, so 1 works. That means x minus 1 is a factor. So we want to divide this by x minus 1. How could we do that? Well, we could use long division, but... Since we're dividing by x minus 1, we might as well use synthetic. All right, so since it's x minus 1, the positive 1 goes out front, and you make the bracket to accommodate two rows. All right, and make sure the exponents count down. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, the coefficient here is coefficients 1, 6, 9, negative 6, negative 10. 1, 6, 9, negative 6, negative 10. All right, we are going to be adding vertically. So first step is bring down the 1, and then we are multiplying. 1 times 1 is 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 1 times 7 is 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. 1 times 16 is 16. Negative 6 plus 16 is 10. 1 times 10 is positive 10. And the remainder is 0. Of course, we knew that already, that the remainder would be 0, because we just used the remainder theorem right here and got 0. Now, these are the new coefficients. Now, 1 is times x. Let's see. Well, we started with x to the fourth. So this one is going to be times x to the third. 
And then you just count down. The 7 is times x squared. The 16 is times x. And the 10 does not have an x. All right. And this whole thing is going to be multiplied by x minus 1 because we said x minus 1 is a factor. All right, so now we have to find the zeros of this part right here. Obviously, the zero here is just one. We need to do this again here. The possible zeros are right here. All right, we already tried positive one. Let's try negative one. All right, so for this function right here, I don't want to call it F again. So this function right here, I'll just call it G. All right, we're just plugging in negative one in this case. All right, because we already did positive one. If we plug in negative one, negative one cubed plus seven times negative one, that's going to be positive one times seven plus 16 times negative one is negative 16 plus 10. And that equals zero. All right, so since we did negative one, now we have x plus 1 is also a factor. All right, real quick, just a reminder of Descartes' rule of signs for the positive zeros. The possible number of positive zeros are the number of plus minus sign changes minus an even whole number. Let's look at our function again. Now we're looking at just this part right here. And what do we notice? These are all positive, okay? No sign changes. And what does that mean? No positive zeros. All right, so if your polynomial meal has no sign changes, you're not going to have any positive zeros. So right here for this part, you might as well just test the negative zeros. But we already had used positive one, so I just went to negative one. All right, so so far we have x minus one and x plus one as factors. We need to take this function here and divide it by x plus one. When you divide by x plus one to use synthetic division, the number out front needs to be negative one. All right, so negative one out front, make the bracket accommodate two rows. Okay, and let's see the exponents. Three, two, one, zero, perfect. What are the coefficients? One, seven, 16, 10. One, seven, 16, 10. All right, they're all positive. All right, bring down the first term. That's a 1, and we are multiplying right here times the bottom row. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Adding vertically, 7 minus 1 is 6. Negative 1 times 6. 16 minus 6. Negative 1 times 10. 10 minus 10. Okay, of course, that 0 is the remainder. Highest exponent here was x to the third. So this coefficient is going to be times x squared. This is plus 6x. And this is plus 10. And what were the other factors? x minus 1 and x plus 1. So this original function right here, if I can erase this mess, this original function right here, that breaks down into this right here. Okay, so now we're in business. Um, equal to zero. All right, so, so far, x minus one equals zero and x equals one x plus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 1. And for this here, do we have two numbers 
that multiply to positive 10 and add to positive 6? I don't think so. If you write out the factors of 10, you have 1 and 10 and you have 5 and 2. The negative version of each one, none of those will add to 6. So we need to use quadratic formula on this quadratic right here. All right, remember you do all these steps here. You do all these steps until you break it down into a quadratic. Once you have x squared as the highest, then you're in business. All right, so the formula, negative b plus minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, this, the a is just 1, right? The a is just 1. The B is 6 and the C is 10. So negative B is going to be negative 6 plus minus radical. B squared is going to be 6 squared minus 4 times A, which is just 1 times C, which is just 10. And that is divided by 2 times A, which is just 1. All right. <clears throat> Negative 6. Plus minus radical. This is going to be 36 minus 40. That's negative 4. Divided by 2. Negative 6 plus minus radical 4 is just 2. And the square root of negative 1 is just i. Okay, because if you did, if you did the square root of negative 4, it's the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. That's going to be 2 times i, all divided by 2. All right, negative, these are added or subtracted in the numerator over a common denominator. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, plus minus 2i divided by 2 is just i. So we have two complex all right, and the other ones were the two real. So we had two reals and two complex. The highest exponent was four, x to the fourth. So how many zeros did we have? Well, we had four of them because it's x to the fourth. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. Two real zeros and two complex. All right, for this example, again, find all zeros. Here's the function, and they tell us x equals 2i is a zero. <clears throat> now, remember what we said about complex zeros. Complex zeros are in pairs. All right, so they are going to be A plus BI and A minus BI. Okay, so if X equals positive 2I is a zero, that means X equals negative 2I is also a zero. Okay, because you change the plus minus sign on the imaginary portion to get the two complex pairs. All right, so we have A plus BI and A minus BI. We have 2I and negative 2I. If those are zeros, remember, like if we said if 4 is a zero, X minus 4 is a factor. Well, if 2I is a zero, X minus 2I is a factor. And if negative 2i is a 0, x minus, 2, x minus negative 2i or x plus 2i 
Those are going to be factors. Those are both factors. So these two binomials are factors of this original function right here. Now, can we divide this function by this right here? Yes, we can, but not in this form. Okay, because we have i's in here. But if we use FOIL or distribute, we can multiply this out. We can get a quadratic. And then we can divide this function by this quadratic. Okay, let's do that. So x, first, I'm going to use FOIL. x times x is x squared. The inner outer is going to be negative 2ix. I'll write it out even though I can see it's going to cancel. And then positive 2ix. And last, negative 2i times positive 2i. Well, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. And of course, i times i is i squared. All right, negative 2ix, positive 2ix. That's good. That's gone. x squared. Remember, i squared is just negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. All right, so x squared plus 4 is a factor. All right, and since x squared plus 4 is a factor, what I am going to do is take this mess right here and divide it by x squared plus 4. Now, we can't use synthetic because this is x squared, not just x. We can't use synthetic, so I'm going to use long division on this mess right here. All right, so we're going to do x squared plus 4. And that is going to be divided into 3x to the 4th plus x to the third, plus 17x squared, plus 4x plus 20. All right. So we're just doing the long division now. Okay. So what times x squared gives us 3x to the 4th? Or should I say 3x to the 4th divided by x squared? That's just 3x squared. All right, distribute 3x squared times x squared is 3x to the 4th. 3x squared times 4 is positive. Let me see here. Okay, if you want, you don't have to, but if you want... Since we skipped the x, see it went from x squared to 4, we can insert a 0x right here. All right, maybe that'll help clear things up. So 3x squared times x squared is 3x to the 4th. 3x squared times 0x, we could say 0x to the 3rd. Okay, you don't have to do that, but I'm just trying to line it up. And 3x squared times positive 4 is going to be 12 x squared. All right, and now we're going to subtract this whole thing. 3x to the 4th minus 3x to the 4th, gone. x to the 3rd minus 0x to the 3rd is still x to the 3rd. And 17x squared minus 12x squared is going to be 5x squared. All right, and um, I believe we're going to bring down the next term, but let's let's do this first. X to the third divided by x squared is just positive x. Distributing x times x squared is x to the third. X times zero x that's zero x squared. X times four is going to be four x. And I forgot. Well, I didn't forget, but I just. Did it said I would do it later, so bring down the 4x. All right, and now we're in business. We are subtracting this whole thing. 
X to the third minus X to the third, gone. 5X squared minus zero. 5X squared. 4X minus 4X is zero. I'm gonna write it just to line it up and finally bring down the 20. All right, let's see. 5x squared divided by x squared is positive 5. Distributing 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times 0x is 0x. 5 times 4 is 20. Perfect. When we subtract this whole thing, we just get zero. That is our remainder. All right, so we are in business. The remainder is zero. And this right here is going to be multiplied by this right here. Okay, we just divided. So that means this times this gives us the original. All right, so let's write that out on the bottom here. We have 3x squared plus x plus 5. I'll do it in a different color. 3x squared plus x plus 5. And that is going to be times x squared plus 4. All right, we already found the zeros for this one. We're setting this equal to zero. We need the zeros for this one right here. So we need to either factor or use quadratic formula. All right, three times five is 15. And if we wrote out the factors of 15, do we have a pair that adds to positive one? Five times three, negative five, negative three. There's no way to get positive one. Okay, so we need quadratic formula on this mess right here. All right, so let's see. Negative B plus minus radical B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Negative B, this is going to be negative 1 plus or minus radical B squared, so it's 1 squared. Minus 4 times A, which is 3, times C, which is 5. And that's divided by 2 times A, or 2 times 3. All right, negative 1 plus minus square root. 1 squared is 1. 4 times 5 is 20, times 3 is 60. So we have 1 minus 60, which gives us negative 59. And that's divided by 6. All right, can you break up 59? I don't think so. All right, let me see on the calculator if I can break up 59 at all. Well, negative 59, we know it's negative 1 times 59. Let me see if I can break this up. 5 plus 9 is 14, and 14 is not divisible by 3. Let me try some bigger numbers here. Um, 59 divided by 7 won't work. Divided by 11 won't work. 59 divided by 13 won't work. 59 divided by 17 won't work. I don't think we can break it up. No, we can't break this up. Okay. So it's going to be negative 1 plus or minus, And this is square root of negative 1, which is just i, times the square root of 59. And that is divided by 6. All right, so these are going to be two complex solutions. And the originals are 
were also complex. They were uh, x equals 2i and x equals negative 2i. These are also two complex. Remember the complex solutions are always in pairs. So that's it, 2i, negative 2i. If I were to write them out, it would be 2i, negative 2i. And it would be negative 1 plus i radical 59 over 6. And of course, negative 1 minus i radical 59 over 6. So those would be all of your zeros. Four zeros. And what was the highest exponent? Four. So the fundamental theorem of algebra works. All right, once again, they want us to find all the zeros of this function right here. And it's given that x equals one plus nine i is a zero. <clears throat> This is a complex number, and they always come in pairs. So the complex conjugate, you change the plus minus sign on the imaginary portion. Okay, so that's going to be 1 minus 9i, and that's also a 0. All right, so we basically have two of the zeros already. Now, remember in the past... If let's say you had the number 2 as a 0, that means x minus 2 is a factor. So x minus each of these terms is going to be a factor. So I'm going to do x minus 1 minus 9i. And I'm also going to do x minus 1 plus 9i. All right, distributing the negative x minus 1 and negative of negative 9i is going to be positive 9i. And over here, x minus 1 and minus 9i. So these two trinomials right here are factors. Now, we want to divide the original function right here. We want to divide the original function by these two. But we can't divide it in this form. We're going to have to multiply these out. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this times this right here. It's going to be a little bit of work. Distributing x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x x times negative 9i is negative 9ix. All right, and let's see what else. Distributing negative 1 times x is negative x. I'm going to write it underneath. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 9i is positive 9i. All right, one more. 9i times x is positive 9ix. 9i times negative 1 is negative 9i. Okay, notice I'm writing it under the like terms. And 9i times negative 9i is negative 81 i squared okay because nine times negative nine is 81 i times i is i squared okay recall that i squared is the same as negative one and negative 81 times negative one is positive 81. all right combining like terms these two cancel these two cancel and we have x squared minus x minus x is going to be minus 2x. 
positive 1 and positive 81 is positive 82. So this right here is a factor. Okay, it is the combination of these two, and now we can take the original and divide it by the factor that we have. Okay, we cannot use synthetic division here. So we need to use long division. All right, I'm going to write this out here. x squared minus 2x plus 82. And that goes into the original. 2x to the third minus 7x squared. One seventy X minus two forty six. All right, two X to the third. I'll do it in a different color here. Two X to the third divided by X squared is going to be two X, right? Because two divided by the coefficient here is one. Two divided by one is two. X to the third divided by X squared is two is x all right distributing 2x times x squared is 2x to the third 2x times negative 2x is negative 4x squared and 2x times 82 is 164 x all right we are subtracting this whole thing right here 2x to the third minus 2x to the third, that's gone. Negative times negative is positive. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. x squared. And 170 minus 164 is positive 6 with an x. Bring down the final term, negative 246. All right, repeat the process. Negative 3x squared divided by x squared is negative 3. Distributing negative 3 times x squared. Negative 3 times negative 2x is positive 6x. And negative 3 times 82 is negative 246. All right, so that's what we expected to get a remainder of 0. Because we divided, we're going to subtract this whole thing. We divided by something that was a factor. So this minus itself is just zero. All right, that's your remainder. So basically, we get 2x minus 3. So we have this 2x minus 3 times this right here equals the original function. All right, so these two multiplied equal the original. Okay, rewriting, x squared minus 2x plus 82. And that's going to be times 2x minus 3. Now, we already found that we set it equal to 0. We already found the zeros for this part right here. This was from the beginning. All right, x squared minus 2x plus 82. That came from the two factors that were given. Okay, when we multiplied this out, that's what we got. So we already got the zeros for this one. That was um, 1 minus 1 plus 9i and 1 minus 9i. All right, we got two zeros, but we're looking for three of them because it's x to the third. All right, so what's the last zero? Right here, 2x minus three equals zero. Okay, plus three on both sides. And here we have x times two, the opposite of times two is divided by two. So x is just three halves. And also, the other ones were 1 plus 9i and 1 minus 9i. All 
All right, so those are the three zeros. All right, so for the fundamental theorem of algebra, <clears throat> a polynomial of degree n will have n zeros, although not necessarily n different zeros. All right, for example, if you have f of x equals x minus 2 to the third, and you broke up x minus 2 multiplied three times like so, and you set this equal to zero, you would get the number two three times. So x equals two as a zero would occur three times. Okay, and the number of times an x value is a zero is called its multiplicity. So in this case, x equals two is a zero with multiplicity three. So the multiplicity is basically the number of times that zero occurs. All right, in this example, if we took uh, this function right here, and let's say we set it equal to zero. All right, the first one would be x to the fourth equals zero. And if you took x to the fourth and made it x minus zero to the fourth equals zero, and then broke this up four times, you would get x equals zero four times. So x equals zero has multiplicity of four. All right, for the x plus three squared, If you set that equal to zero and multiply this two times x plus three times x plus three, you would get x equals negative three two times. Okay, so x equals negative three has a multiplicity of two. And fin finally, the last term, x minus six, the exponent is just one. So x would be positive six, and that only occurs one time. Example, find a polynomial with integer coefficients having the given degree and zeros. All right, so this is going to be degree 3 with zeros 1, 2, and 5. Okay, remember now if these are zeros, that means x minus that number is a factor. So x minus 1, x minus 2 and x minus 5 are all factors. Now, technically, this is just one possible answer. If you set this equal to 0, you can still have a number a out front. Okay, and what we'll say is a is any real number that makes the coefficients integers. All right, so we'll just leave it at that. All right, anyhow, we need to multiply this out. We'll keep the A as is. And distributing x times x is x squared. Inner is negative x, outer is negative 2x, so that's negative 3x. And last is negative 1 times negative 2, that's positive 2, times x minus 5. And distributing again, we're going to keep the a. Uh, let's see, x times x squared is x to the third. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. And x times 2 is 2x. Negative 5 times x squared, I'm going to write it underneath. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative 3x is plus 15x. 
negative five times two is negative 10. All right, combining the like terms, we have A times X to the third, negative three and negative five is negative eight. 15 and two is 17. And that is minus 10. Now, as you can see, the coefficient here is 1, negative 8, 17, negative 10. The coefficients are already integers. So if we just let A equal 1 and distribute 1, then this remains unchanged. Okay? So if we let A equal 1, we can say that x to the third minus 8x squared plus 17x minus 10. That is one possible answer. That is one possible polynomial that has zeros of 1, 2, and 5. Right? We want it to, the instruction said to find a polynomial. So this is it right here. This is one possible polynomial. If we let A equal 2 and distributed, we would have another one, and we would still have the same zeros. So that's the point. But we already had integers for the coefficients. So we could just let A equal 1. Next example, they want us to find a polynomial with degree 4 with zeros of negative 3, 2 minus 5i, and negative 3 is a zero of multiplicity 2. All right. So if negative 3 is a zero of multiplicity 2, that means x plus 3, and it's going to be squared, is a factor. All right. Because if we set this equal to zero, we would get negative 3. And we have to have it squared because it's multiplicity 2. Now, remember, for these complex numbers, they always come in pairs for the zeros. So if you have 2 minus 5i, you have to change the plus minus sign on the imaginary part. And you'll get 2 plus 5i. All right, so we're going to have 2 plus 5i is a factor. And 2 minus 5i is also a factor. All right, so these right here are the factors. Now we're looking to find a polynomial, so we need to at least multiply this. So um, distributing, use FOIL, 2 times 2, that's 4. Inner is negative 5i times 2. Outer is positive 5i times 2. And the last is going to be negative 5i times positive 5i, that's going to be negative 25i squared. And of course, i squared is just negative 1, so negative 25 times negative 1 is positive 25. And 4 plus 25 gives us 29. All right, since these are both factors, we're going to do x minus each of these numbers. All right, so let's see. It's going to be x. I'll do it in a different color so we don't get confused. It's going to be x minus 2 plus 5i. And we're also going to do x minus 2 minus 5i. All right, so this is going to be distributing the negative x minus 2, minus 5i. This is going to be x minus 2, and negative, negative 5i is positive 5i. All right, and just like before, we have to distribute this mess. All right, let's see, x times x is x squared x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times 5i is positive 5ix. 
All right, negative two times X, I'm gonna write it with the like terms. That's negative two X. Negative two times negative two is positive four. And negative two times five I is negative 10 I. All right, finally, negative 5i times x is negative 5ix. Negative 5i times negative 2 is positive 10i. And negative 5i times positive 5i is negative 25i squared. All right, we know i squared is negative 1. <clears throat> Negative 25 times negative 1 is positive 25. All right, we have x squared. Negative 2x's make negative 4x. These two cancel. Plus 4 plus 25 is plus 29. And these two cancel. All right, so this right here is going to be times x plus 3 squared. Actually, let me uh, unpack the x plus 3 squared. All right, using FOIL, x times x is x squared. Inner outer is going to be 3x plus 3x, that's 6x. And last is going to be 3 times 3, that's 9. x squared plus 6x plus 9 goes right here. Now remember, we're supposed to use a coefficient a that makes all of these terms coefficients integers, okay? But we already have that. So once we multiply this out, we should be okay. All right, so I'm gonna keep the a. Finally, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times six x is six x to the third x squared times 9 is 9x. Negative 4x times x squared is negative 4x to the third. Negative 4x times 6x is negative 24x squared. Oops, let me see. Negative 24x squared. Right here, this was x squared times 9, so it was 9x squared. Uh, negative 4x times Positive 9 is negative 36x. And the last one, <clears throat> 29 times x squared. 29 times 6x, let me see, that's going to be um, 180 minus 6, that's going to be 174x. And 29 times 9 let me use the calculator. That's 261. All right, and combining the likes here. This is a little messy here. This is supposed to be in parentheses, but we're adding like terms. Keep the A. It's just going to be 1 in the end. All right, X to the fourth. Plus 6 minus 4, that's positive 2. 9 minus 2 is 7, plus 29, that's 36. Uh, let's see, 174 minus 36, that's going to be 144 minus 6. I think that's 138. Positive 138x, let's see, 6 plus 8 is 14. Yes, that's correct. And the last is positive 261. All right. They're all integer coefficients. So just let A equal 1. And this would be your answer right here. If you just let A equal 1, distributing a 1, you'll just get the same thing. So that's it. 
All right, little mistake right here. I was trying to do 9 minus 24 plus 29. Okay, apparently it's not 36. So that is just going to be 14. That was the only mistake. 14 on the x squared. So that's it. All right, last one. Degree 3 with zeros of negative 1, negative 2, and 4. But the coefficient for x is negative 20. Okay, so this stipulation here, I think is going to change things at the end. But anyhow, if the degree, if the zeros are negative 1, negative 2, and 4, that means x minus negative 1, or x plus 1, is going to be a factor x minus negative 2 or x plus 2 is going to be a factor and x minus 4 those are all going to be factors all right and we need to put the number a right here all right distributing let's see we're going to keep the a for now <clears throat> we'll use foil on these two x times x is x squared inner is 1x outer is 2x that's 3x and last is 1 times 2 and that's times x minus 4 all right distributing again keep the a for now and let's see x times x squared is x to the third x times 3x is 3x squared x times 2 is 2x. All right, write the like terms underneath. Negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 3x is negative 12x. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. All right, combining like terms. Still have the a. We still have x to the third. Plus 3 minus 4, that's negative 1, x squared. Plus 2 minus 12, that's negative 10 on the x. And we have a negative 8. Almost done here. Normally this would be it. However, there was a stipulation that said the coefficient for x is negative 20. All right, so let's just distribute the a to the one with x, if we did a times negative 10x, all right, if we did a times negative 10x, they said the coefficient on x is negative 20. In other words, negative 20x is one of the terms. Now, we don't have that, we have negative 10x, but if we set it equal to positive 20x, we can solve for a. All right, let me see here. Oh, no, the coefficient is negative 20. Okay. The coefficient here is negative 20. All right, so let's solve for a. If we divide a is times negative 10x, the opposite of times negative 10x is to divide by negative 10x. It cancels here. X divided by X cancels. And negative 20 divided by negative 10 is just 2. All right, so A equals 2. All right, so if I cross off the A here and multiply this whole thing by 2, I should have my answer. All right, so distributing... I basically just let the A equal 2. I just wrote it on the other side. Same thing. If it we're here or here, same thing. We're just going to distribute. 2 times X to the third. That's going to give us 2X to the third. 2 times negative X squared is negative 2X squared. 2 times negative 10X is negative 20X. 
And two times negative eight is negative 16. So this right here would be the final answer. All right, this right here would have worked just fine if they didn't force us to make negative 20 the coefficient for x. This would have worked fine. But like we said, this had to be negative 20. So we had to change the value for a and change the coefficients on the other terms as well.